Hey, it's Jeff McIntyre. And if you just finished a film but are paralyzed by indecision, you're stuck at the crossroads of shitty and crappy decisions when it comes to distribution. Do you go knock on the door of a frothing at the mouth, hungry shark, traditional distribution, or do you venture off on your own? and try to self-distribute your film because that's the rage. That's every podcast you've listened to in the past six months has all been about finding your niche, serving your niche, and profiting from your niche. I mean, as uplifting as those stories are, how does that really translate to real world numbers, real world results for your film? No, I don't know. Nobody does. But all I do know are the results that I was able to achieve with my doc. And that's why I showered and shaved and am here before you to peel back the curtain to give you a peek of exactly what self-distributing a documentary looks like. And yeah, we're going to go deep. We're going to look into the production budget. I'm going to share with you my marketing numbers. And yeah, we're gonna crack into my Facebook ad account. You're gonna get the skinny on how much was spent and how well those ads performed. Oh yeah, we're gonna get messy. We're gonna dive into that virtual pig pen with all the distributors out there. I'll share with you emails and deals that I was sent. Names will be named, terms will be discussed. Because at this point, I don't give three shits. <laughs> What's the point? of holding anything back in the spirit of transparency. I think we all need to start sharing real numbers and real results, if there are any. I mean, how will any of us grow? How will this institution of independent filmmaking thrive into the future if we all don't understand the current rules and we all don't see the cause and effect of certain strategies and game plans that we're now really experimenting with our films. So it's only through this transparency, warts and all, that I really believe that we can all grow together. I will also reveal how the launch went and I'll open up my dashboard and show you how many units were moved. And then we'll wrap up this big old self-distribution shit show with what I like to call phase two revenue streams that's pursuing educational and institutional sales. For me, those are opportunities that are kind of bursting at the seams. So if you're ready for this deep dive, strap on your scuba tank and let's jump in the shark infested waters and figure out, is it possible to successfully self distribute a documentary in these crazy days and times? So the doc in question is called The Great Cookie Comeback. Have you heard of this little cookie brand called Famous Amos? Yeah, well, it's only the biggest cookie brand in the world. And whether you knew it or not, when you were plowing through your bag of Famous Amos cookies, there actually was a real guy named Amos. Yeah, Wally Amos, back in the day, 1975, started Famous Amos. I mean, his cookies may have been small, but wow, the success he achieved was massive. He was a household name back in the day. Really hit it big. And then you fast forward 10 years, loses everything. So I roll up on Wally Amos five years ago. And at this point, he's 80 years old and a step away from being homeless. He's about to move into the YMCA, a 10 by 10 room. Just a sad turn of events for a guy who used to be a business icon. But enough of my chatter. Take a look at the trailer. People think that I'm, I'm wealthy and I'm famous. I mean, I'm, I'm as famous as the most famous. <laughs> and every month, I have less money than I need to get through. How does a business superstar end up here? This guy has lived a life of firsts. Growing up in the segregated South, he shatters expectations and becomes the first black talent agent at the world's largest talent agency, where he takes on the Temptations, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Marvin Gaye, and he's the first to discover Simon and Garfunkel, and then creates a massive global brand. Oh yeah, there's a huge story in this little bag of cookies. Wally Amos was the first to make chocolate chip cookies. 
famous. If you want to make it big in the West, you've got to be too good to resist. The brand and the man quickly became global household names. It's the Wally Amos Show. After a decade of success, Wally's empire crumbled. Yeah, I made some really horrible decisions. Ultimately caused me to lose the company. For the past 30 years, Wally's big comeback has been plagued with even bigger setbacks. I can make lots of cookies. I can't make another life. My new home, YMCA. YMCA. I'm going to live in the YMCA. Despite losing it all, giving up is not an option. Next up is a new brand from a cookie legend. At 82, Wally's launching his final cookie company and betting it all on Shark Tank. Asking for $50,000. But it's a long walk home to the cookie kingdom. Who will try my chocolate chip cookies? Don't throw the cookies in your mouth, will you? <laughs> I've never known why it was cookies. The reality is, Cookies wound up being my calling. So you know this isn't my first trip to the documentary rodeo. No, no, no. I've been in this game for uh, decades. However, what is very new is my responsibility to get this film out there and hopefully have it turn a profit. Because in the old days, I did a lot of work with ABC where my primary role was the making, not the showing. They would handle the broadcasting and the monetization of any content we created in the past. But now, that's all on me. So first stop on this tour is the budget. For the sake of round numbers, this film cost about 15 grand, a little less to make. Biggest expenses were travel, because at the time, Wally was living in Honolulu. So I was having to fly back a couple times for those interviews. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate the sympathy. I know it was, whew, it was rough having to go to Hawaii to shoot this, um, but I muddled through. Another line item was some licensing of photos and clips. Wally, thankfully, had an incredible archival library. He did have some really cool old film, 8mm, 16mm raw film that I had to get transferred. One of the bigger cost centers was the legal clearance. I hired one of the best teams in town to clear this film, Donaldson and Khalif, and that ran me about $2,500. Being a fellow indie filmmaker, of course, you know nowhere in this budget are the hundreds of hours of the blood, the sweat, and the tears that went into the shooting, the producing, the directing, the writing, the editing, the marketing, the promoting, the selling of this film. No. And those hours are never recouped at full market value, if recouped at all. But that's part of the contract, trading pain for art. Okay, can you handle the sheer excitement of getting a bonus tip? If you think your heart could take that kind of excitement, well, sit back. Something that was a definite win for this project was kind of a new approach I tried out in organizing all the massive amounts of interview clips, because that obviously, that's our main ingredient for a documentary, the wonderful interview sound. And in the old days, yeah, I was working off either printed copies of the transcripts or off a screen and highlighting the best bits. But this time, I took some inspiration from a video I saw online of a very famous documentarian who used a database program to catalog all of his interviews, FileMaker Pro, and that really piqued my curiosity. So I toiled to create this template because, you know, funny, I don't know if you knew this or not, but FileMaker Pro does not ship with preloaded filmmaker-friendly templates. Can you believe that? Unacceptable. So anyway, uh, here's this uh, glorious template that I created, and not going to go too deep in the weeds here, but wow, was this a time saver. So after getting transcripts for all the interviews, I load in the key sound bites into this program, and I'm able to customize each entry based on the speaker, the location the interview was shot, there's even a little screen grab so I know what that location looks like. Six months down the road, my memory is very fuzzy where I shot this film. But the real muscle of this process comes in me being able to then assign a theme to each soundbite. And a single soundbite could be assigned multiple themes. 
But in order for this to run smoothly as advertised, it's important that you use the same themes in the program that you may use on a storyboard. And if we cut now to the storyboard that I put together using nothing but materials from the business aisle at the 99 cent store, you could see all these themes on the index cards match the themes that I've used in FileMaker Pro. So for example, if I need a soundbite of Wally talking about losing famous Amos, F A loss, boom, to the program. Bam, there's a soundbite. Not one, but seven soundbites. So, can you see how this could speed along your process of constructing a documentary? Because, as we all know, docs kind of come to life, they are written on the timeline. It's very rare I will take pen uh, to paper and write out a doc. And now, time for everybody's favorite topic. Yep, going through the big D. What, depression? Disappointment? No, distribution, a.k.a. depression and disappointment. So my foray into distribution for this project was kind of like a BLT sandwich, just without the B or the T, just lettuce on stale bread with expired mayo. Mmm, take a bite. Yeah, yummy. So after researching a bunch of distributors, uh, here's my list. Not very long. And my bar was pretty low, too. In order to end up on this extensive list, you had to fall between the range of shitty but may not get fucked without lube or mediocre with slim but possible chance of making $100. So, okay, shitty but may not screw me without lube or mediocre with potential. So the Orchard, Brain Media, Submarine, Rocco Films, Gravitas, they all got emails. They all were sent trailers. Majority said no. Gravitas said, hey, this looks interesting. Let's talk. Why not? I'm excited. Wow, a distributor actually likes my film. And that enthusiasm quickly faded after we spoke on the phone. From Gravitas comes a crappy toss offer. 15-year term, all rights, excluding theatrical, 25% distribution fee. Eh, I think I could do better. So it was right about now I was just soaking up a ton of content sponging tips from Alex Ferrari and Indie Film Hustle, and I even took the Film Audience Blueprint course from Rob Hardy from Film Freedom. The depth and quality of that course really lit my fuse to think, hey, I could find and build a niche audience around this film and step out and at least match a Gravitas deal, if not do better. So the march to self-distribution began. God, if only I would have taken Gravitas's deal. No. <laughs> Not really. In addition to Gravitas, I did get a yes from Indie Rights and had a nice chat with Linda over there. And that's one distributor I think that uh, people do hold in medium to high regard. And they definitely sounded very solid, not very personable, but definitely uh, seems like they have a solid game plan. Just so you know, Indie Rights and every other distributor at our level will not do much marketing, if any. So that's something y'all have to uh, be very comfortable with. If you're not ready to market your film hard, don't press record. Don't bother making a film unless you have enough gas in your tank to get you across the marketing finish line, because you're going to be huffing and puffing to get the word out. And it's always going to be on you, on us as indie filmmakers. No one is riding in on their social media marketing horse to save us. No one is coming in the rowboats. It's just us in that rowboat with one oar and a sea full of sharks and mutant piranhas with coronavirus. So it's up to us to paddle like shit to get to that island where maybe five (laughs) potential audience members await and then keep rowing to the next island where maybe 12 potential audience members, potential renters for $4.99 of our film exist, which smoothly segues us into marketing, which actually is a good segment. So if you were power napping or vaping some Maui Wowie or texting your quarantined mate in another state, Well, put all that away. Pay attention. You may actually learn something. About time, right? And if we're talking marketing, we can only be talking about Facebook ads. Not only that. Of course, I employed some other strategies from reaching out to podcasts and bloggers, uh, list building, funnel conversion, email blasts, all that which we will get to. But first, let's start with a unicorn in the room, Facebook, because come on, that's where the gold is, right? 
Well, at least in Zuckerberg's pocket. It used to be in mine, but now it's all in his. So I launched the film page back in January 2018. And it's interesting, looking back in my uh, ad manager, I really didn't start advertising, I don't think, until 2019 because... Back then, actually, you had a greater chance of your tribe seeing your posts organically, where now it's just good luck. So now it's 100% pay to play. So over time, you know, I I was able to uh, build up the page as following, uh, 2,893. And then I started ramping up again once I decided I'm just going to release this damn dog. I want to get it out of my hair. I want to push it through the creative birthing canal get it into the world so I can move on. It's not the best film I've ever made. I think it's good enough. It tells an interesting story. Hopefully it helps Wally get some exposure and get him back up on his feet, making cookies and making money. But it will not consume any more of my life. 78, 82% is good enough for me. Because a film that's 82% and out is much better than a film that you're intending to toil on to get to 99% and then push it out. Because you never will. And intentions don't pay the bills. Don't springboard you to other opportunities. Drop the shit and move on. So I did. But I didn't slack off. I hustled and I created a ton of custom content. Like I said, 110 posts, 28 videos repurposing scenes from the film. Wally was a really positive guy, so I had a bunch of posts that incorporated some Wally wisdom, his positive sayings and slogans. And this seemed to resonate with people. 115 likes, got some shares. So once again, it was just an opportunity for something fresh and new. Awesome thing about Wally was his archive. There are so many wonderful old photos of Wally Amos. So that definitely lends itself to doing, you know, a a Wally throwback every Thursday. And because my sweet spot with this audience was 45 plus, 45 to like 65 years old, because a lot of these people remember Wally back in the day, they loved the old photos. 163 likes, 22 shares. So the archival material always did big social business for me. Look at this cookie badass. With a gold cookie around his neck, you gotta love it. And of course, doing memes, that's big. Throwing up some old ads, this was a lot of fun. Something I'd do every time around the Oscars, I'd create a Oscar-themed post with a play on words from one of the uh, Best Picture nominees. And uh, this year, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was the nominee, so Once Upon a Cookie. And this is some cool artwork of Wally's original shop on Sunset Boulevard. There he is. And uh, 283 likes. That's not bad. 48 shares. And it's fun and it's fresh. Super Bowl. Playing off the Super Bowl and the Cookie Bowl comes to life. And there's Wally scoring a touchdown with his famous cookie recipe. Always opportunity. But I know what you want. Let's get dirty in the nitty gritty. How much did Jeff drop of his hard-earned money, which he'll never see again? So jumping in the clunkiest interface online, the Facebook ad manager. Thank you for making this so difficult. I really appreciate that. But anyway, as you could see, whole lot of ads were running. Whole lot of credit cards were swiping. Since January 2018, when I first started running ads for this film, I ran a grand total as of March 2nd, 2020, 121 ads for $1,383. And in a little bit, all will be revealed. Was I able to recoup at least my marketing spend on the big launch for rentals and sales of the film? We'll find out. But first, something interesting I found out that since this is an older audience, when I'd run just an ad with the current picture of Wally, with, of course, his name emblazoned uh, within the ad, um, it did not convert as well as when I did a split screen, which was, you know, from their heyday. It was a little blast of nostalgia to trigger a dopamine hit and hopefully a like or a buy. So it was really key with this audience to always take them back to sweeter times. 
So I think you need to be mindful of your audience's psychological trigger points and always be delivering material content that pushes those buttons. Because this kind of stuff did really well for me. 714 likes, 159 shares, 47 comments. Boom. That was a good day. Shut up. Oh, my God. That pisses me off to hear that. Yeah, when I was recording the screen capture part of this little dog and pony show, I kind of got intoxicated again by the vanity metrics, the likes, the shares, the comments. At the end of the day, who gives two flying fucks if you got 758 likes if you ended up getting zero sales? It doesn't matter. And it's so easy to get swept up in the feel-good dopamine hits of the likes and the page followers. Yeah, that's awesome at first glance, but you always need to stay sober. If that means having a friend come over and sock you in the face with a wake-up call to what really matters. And that is building up a passionate, engaged following. Interacting with them online because you're a real cool human being who cares and not just a slick used documentary salesperson. But then the key to drive them away from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, get them onto your website where they opt in. They sign up for your newsletter and you send out a freebie and you capture their digits. It really is like the marketing gods showering you with Bitcoin. It's that vital. So you own their soul forever. <laughs> That's why building, maintaining, and nurturing your own email list is crucial. Not just for the survival of this film, but your next and next and next. I mean, you, you know all this. But are you making a concerted effort into putting it into play? Are you creating landing pages? Do you have mechanisms to grab email addresses that trigger an autoresponder email sequence? It's worth the effort you put in on the front end. It really pays dividends long term. Back to the video. A couple months before releasing the film, I wanted to try a couple different ad experiments. I eventually would test three things. One, can I entice people to jump on my email list if I give them a free ticket to the film? Two, can I get them onto the list with a $5 off coupon? And three, can I grab their email address just by offering a free recipe, Wally's famous recipe? And I think this ad right here takes you to the squeeze page for the free recipe. And we did similar things uh, for the $5 off coupon, same kind of lead gen page. So all in, I spent about $173 testing different lead magnet ads. Jumping over to my email platform, as you can see, I was able to collect about 189 subscribers. So from the 189, if we drill down, you could see 52 takers for the free recipe, 23 takers for the $5 off coupon, and a grand total of 11. One who even said, hell no, not only do I not want your emails anymore, I don't want any freebies from you. I don't even want to watch your crappy documentary for free. Thanks, Felicia. So that was very surprising. And to do it again, I'd never do a freebie because I had some takers. So why cater to the minority with that kind of failed strategy? You need to figure out what's going to move the needle with your very unique audience and then deliver an enticement that will excite them. So I, I decided to use Gumroad to sell the film. And it's a pretty robust platform for creating different versions of your product you could let people buy and download your film, or you could just restrict it to uh, streaming only, which at this point I have done. And as an enticement to get someone to buy the film instead of renting it for $4.99, for an extra $5, I really pushed the fact that uh, they could jump in and uh, take a bite of the Cookie Lovers Bundle. Mmm, are you enticed? Well, you should be, damn it. It includes the documentary, a deleted scene. <laughs> Woohoo! It's getting good. Uh, a video of uh, Wally showing you how to make his cookies. Uh, some Wally memes, which I repurposed from the Facebook campaign. Six high quality images. And I put together a book using the Wally wisdom images. And I just uh, packaged it as a nice little square book uh, as an enticement. And then also included Wally's original recipe. And uh, for the rental package, 
yeah, it's four ninety nine, but right there, boom, the beginning of the description. I definitely try to um, get you hooked on the upsell. Hang on, we got a sweet deal for you. Sure, if you rent it, you'll get four gifts, but uh, just for five bucks more, you get all these extras. So definitely always trying to drive people in to the the bigger ticket item. <laughs> Only in film is a $9.99 product considered a big ticket. Oh my God, why didn't I become a plumber? So yeah, so far Gumroad has been working out pretty good. And uh, one way I deliver that on my website, if you go to watch film right from the homepage, I created this, uh, this sales tier. Well, sure, you could rent the film, but just uh, for a little more, you own it. And then Gumroad does a nice job integrating into your website and they just enter all their payment information, boom, bing, bong, and then they're off to the races. One thing that's super critical to hit on when we're talking about Facebook advertising is making sure you laser target the exact audience you're going after. Because as you know by now, that is the real secret sauce to Facebook ads is the ability to micro-target specific groups ages, regions, hobbies, or whether they got a wart on their left cheek or the right. Some of the early audiences that I was going after that seemed to fit the Wally theme were people who self-identified as, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who like documentaries, uh, Shark Tank, small business owners. In the last couple months, I found an audience that really seemed to resonate, Steve Harvey fans who happen to like documentary movies and the Shark Tank TV show. If you're not micro-targeting, then you are truly macro-wasting your hard-earned money. So put Facebook to work in the way it was intended. Use their super sneaky, piracy-marauding techniques to your benefit. God knows they're pirating and selling all our personal information. Why not put that to use for our film's benefit. But you better understand how Facebook ads work because there's uh, a lot of options. Ad types, what's your goal? Is it conversions? Is it vanity metrics? Uh, so watch some YouTube videos, get some training, or you'll just be throwing money down a digital hole. And if you want to do that, I'll give you my email. It may, may make you feel better. At least you know who it's going to. So come launch day, February 28th, 2020, I hit it hard with a multi-tiered advertising blitz, just saturating people with Wally -E videos, which I created some custom videos. I went to see Wally -E in December 2019, just a couple months before the launch, specifically to shoot some uh, video for social media promotion, and that's a great thing. If you have the opportunity to shoot custom content, this is a fun little video that we put together just for the launch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get ready. The great cookie comeback. You might like it and you might not. No, you don't like it because I'm in it. You don't want to eat it because it tastes good like my cookies. <laughs> See you in the movies. See my first and only movie, <laughs> they ain't gonna let me do no more. People, go see this movie. The great Cookie Come Back. Ah! Now that's my kind of movie. <laughs> ha, a talking cookie. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Well, by this time, people have seen enough of Wally, this specific audience. So it didn't have to be a full movie trailer. People have already seen the trailer ad nauseum. So a little promo like that is kind of fun because it's actually the real guy yapping about the movie and you kind of see his personality. He's having fun and more of a, a kind of a behind the scenes approach. And then throughout the weekend, we hit him hard just to remind him, Hey, the film's out. And then updated the cover art of the Facebook page to let everyone know they can watch it now. Just click the watch video button. Did you make any money off this silly project? Funny you should ask. I mean, we could have saved a bunch of time if you would have led with that question. The results from the great cookie comeback. 
So just to, to recap, the ad spend was $1,383, 121 ads, blah, blah, blah. Forget about the nearly $15,000 in hard costs, hundreds of hours of time, talent, and passion. So the big question, does a great cookie comeback lead to the great documentary payoff? Well, to Gumroad we go to find out the truth. For the great cookie comeback during its first week of launch produces a grand total of 10 sales for a payout of exactly $36.94. But not really, because before I launched the account live, I had to do some test transactions. So we have to then subtract $3.99 and $2.99. So that is seven bucks. So really, I told you I'd share real numbers, it brings the total to a robust $29.96. Or put another way, a profit of 11.9 boxes of famous Amos cookies. Yes, almost 12 boxes of the sweet diabetes cavity-inducing treat as compensation for almost five years of work. Ah, it's a good time to be an indie filmmaker, ain't it? But all is not lost. Oh no, my sweet indie filmmakers. The big money, quote unquote, still awaits for education and institutional sales and senior related organizations. So we're talking about senior and assisted living facilities to conferences where they buy content. They buy films to show at these assisted living facilities. There's thousands of facilities across this country who would love to meet the charismatic, uplifting, motivational Wally Amos. So to me, that's a direct fit. Also, this is a great tool to show at business schools. So right over here, we have a whole licensing page put together to sell universities, libraries, schools, and organizations on the film because so many lessons are packed within Wally's story from entrepreneurship to business planning contracts, marketing promotion, business law. So I think that is a, a ripe audience to tap. And, you know, at 200 bucks a pop, then, you know, there's a chance to recoup at least some of my Facebook marketing budget. And that's the thing, thinking as a entrepreneur here, not just a filmmaker, not just a creative, you always have to have your business hat strongly strapped to your head. So for senior living facilities, I'm creating an activity in a box because there are activity directors at each one of these facilities that are desperate to come up with things to do on a daily basis for the seniors. So sure, why not make their job a little easier and they'll gladly fork over a measly $350 to do so. So, and I've done some research on facilities in my area and what I also wanted to do is test this concept out. So I contacted a number of assisted living facilities in my area and set up some screenings where I showed this to a uh, small group of sleepy seniors. I think we only, only lost two during the, the one screening that we had. Uh, no, didn't lose them. We're not talking about paramedics uh, and gurneys. No, no, they fell asleep. So uh, some of them left early. Uh, most of them left early. Uh, that, that's a great feeling as a filmmaker. Loud thuds during your film. Bodies hit the floor. And something else uh, I also did was call up some business schools in my area and had a great screening over at a California State University and uh, a room of at least uh, 50, 60 biz uh, school students. And they were really engaged and had a great discussion afterwards. So in exchange for that, I was able to get some really good testimonials from professors, which I then use in my marketing. And that's the goal, to do a couple more screenings at biz schools and assisted living facilities, get some really nice testimonials, get some feedback, make some tweaks, and really hit the ground hard selling this. In addition to social media marketing, of course, I wanted to reach out to influencers and podcasters, bloggers who had shows that kind of mirrored some of the themes in the documentary, entrepreneurship, business, positivity, senior living. So I uh, did some research 
And as you can see here, I found a couple blogs that totally fit in with my niche. And, and then I uh, reached out and I made them kind of a cool offer. I said, hey, uh, to do something different to promote this film, I'd like to work with you to create custom content that not only reflects the film's major messages, but aligns with your mission statement. So for example, uh, one of these uh, popular business podcasters, I said, hey, let's put together a course based on the principles in this film. You watch the film, then you pull five areas out which you think would be interesting to your audience. So let's say uh, business contracts, promotion marketing, biz development, and you break down what Wally did right and wrong when he started Famous Amos and put it in a way which you know would move the needle with your audience. So now you have a pretty cool piece of content, which I end up producing for you, that you're able to offer to your people. Either you can put a price tag on it or you give it away for free. If you're looking to build your list, you're looking for some fresh content because all these guys are hungry for fresh content. So why not be there? And not just ask, ask, ask for free promotion, but give them something valuable in return. And let's say if it was a course, well, you come up with a rev share agreement. If you can have the course, you know, be, a, you know, either $49, $99 upsell in, in addition to the film, then you're definitely pocketing some extra money. And now you're thinking like an entrepreneur. And yes, all this was in place. And I had a couple of takers early on, but they all vanished. So that needs to be bookmarked. And that, once I have time, I may revisit. So if you make a documentary that definitely has some life lessons, some really good takeaways, figure out a way to turn all that into a course. I mean, you know, online courses are huge now. You find a podcast or a blogger that's talking about this stuff. Well, why wouldn't they want to partner up with you? So even though that didn't come through, I still think that is a hell of a good idea. And it's something I'm still going to push for. And I, I recommend it highly. Something that goes hand in hand with knowing your niche is really figuring out if they want what you're selling. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. Are you producing a product that eventually will have a hungry audience? And I think it's filmmakers now because we're not just creatives anymore. We're wearing all the hats. We want to make sure by the time we're already spent and bloody and exhausted from making the thing that we still have enough gas in our tank to then switch to putting on the marketing hat and the promotion hat and the distribution hat and the salesperson hat. Uh, and that is fatiguing and it's not for the weak of heart and you better have a hell of a lot of passion and just fiery love, showtime after dark love for your project, your topic, your niche, in order for you to, to truly get across the finish line. Because for us as creatives, the finish line is no longer, oh, I finished the movie, save as MP4, upload. No, 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 that's really only when the, the race begins. After you finish cutting, then you better strap on your really good shoes and then pray you have enough money left over to make 14 Starbucks runs every day just to power up to get you through the next phase of the process. God, this video just won't end. If you've made it this far, either two things, you're really desperate for any advice on how to self-distribute a documentary, or you're quarantined somewhere with a face mask and literally have nothing better to do. You've watched every other video online and you thought, hey, why don't I give this uh, video a try? <laughs> Uh, sorry if your symptoms are worse. So fight on. We never know what's coming around the corner and this media landscape is changing so quickly. There's always going to be an opportunity. But a lot of times that means we have to pivot a little and apply our skills in a new way. And some of us old timers don't like doing that because we like this way. We like this lane. It's been steady. There aren't many potholes. It's familiar. But this lane, unfortunately now, is leading to a dead end for a lot of us. So it's so crucial to pivot and find the opportunities in these new spaces. They don't look anything like from where we've come from. And it is seeing things through new eyes and figuring out 
innovative ways to apply our rich skill sets. Because that's the great thing about some of us old timers. We have decades of experience just waiting in the wings. But it's our responsibility to get innovative and creative with our skill sets and find new ways to apply them to the ever shifting landscape of audience profiles and needs and platforms that don't look anything like the legacy broadcasters of yesteryear. So if I can't make this feature link doc work, well, that's on me. Come on, it's time to innovate. Chop this baby up into eight, nine, ten different five-minute episodes and then roll it out as a series. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for enduring this load of crap. I really appreciate you watching. And this is probably the point where I'd say good luck to y'all, but uh, I'm not because you don't need luck. None of us as independent filmmakers need luck anymore. We need strength. So I wish you lots of strength to stay committed to your passion, committed to your why. Why did you hit record on that camera years ago? So strength to stay aligned with that passion, strength to endure the storms that will come, the courage to try new things, new marketing methods, new advertising channels, new self-distribution uh, techniques. Maybe some of you will get lucky on any number of those things, but luck is never a strategy. Strength and forward momentum, taking a risk by putting your foot out and making that next step, that is the only path forward in this wacky new world of self-distribution. So stay strong. Oh my God, right when you thought it was safe, to continue watching videos. Nope, I'm back. <laughs> good God. So, you know, stay strong. I mean, that felt good. It's rah, rah, go team. I still stand by that. But more important than staying strong is acting from a place of strength. And the only way you can do that is arming yourself with the right information, the right steps that will guarantee a successful movie launch. While I truly believe the techniques I used were proper, a lot of them on their own had great merit, I stumbled in the execution of some of those ideas, and that really could use some tweaking. Well, thankfully, and I'm really excited to announce that I am partnering up with the movie marketing guru, Rob Hardy, the captain of the Filmmaker Freedom website. You've heard him on Alex Ferrari's podcast, among a bunch of others. He has this great course, the Film Audience Blueprint course, which I mentioned in my video. It's a course that inspired me to even take on self-distribution. Rob knows his stuff, and that's why I'm so excited. He has agreed to dissect all my marketing moves for launch 1.0 and kind of gave me a report card. Where did I go right? Where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? And then he will compile that information and give me homework and send me out to attempt launch 2.0. Now with a very smart strategy. And the cool part, we're inviting you to ride along shotgun. You'll have a front row seat to see what works and what doesn't. Birthing a film is hard enough. And I know fellow filmmakers, you feel me. If you're wearing all the hats already, this next phase, it's grueling. And I think if we can all band together and share tips and tricks that work, that'll only help us all along. So here's how this is gonna shake out. If you click on the link below or to the side or above or coming out my ear, what that'll do is get you on our list. And you've done this before, it's a lead magnet. I just am begging for your name and your email and what we will give you in exchange, I think will be unlike anything else you've seen before. We've all signed up for a mini course, right? We've all been disappointed by the content, slowly dripped out day by day, a lot of thin, ultra salesy content, all sizzle, no steak. Nope, not here. The one thing Rob and I have in common, we like to over deliver. I mean, you just watched a 41 minute lead magnet video. Who does that? Well, we do because we're all about delivering value. And this mini course promises to have actionable items. It'll probably be four videos where Rob 
does a deep dive on some of my marketing efforts and gives me truly actionable advice to what I can do different. And then you'll see me implementing some of that. So that's what our mini course uh, has in store. Real world advice that you as a filmmaker at a crossroads right now wondering what platform do I advertise on? How do I use Facebook ads to my benefit? Do I even go down that road? Well, we want to arm you with the right information before you throw away a whole bunch of money because it's so easy to drain your MasterCard if you don't get all the settings dialed in properly. And Rob knows all this stuff. This is his domain. That's why I'm so excited that he has teamed up and is going to give me a chance to relaunch this movie in a much smarter fashion, relaunch it in a way where I actually could profit. <laughs> There's a thought, right? Profiting from indie film? <laughs> Incredible. Who would suggest such a crazy thing? Well, we're just crazy enough to believe that it can work. And if you are too, if you believe in indie filmmaking, if you refuse to give up on your passion to make money from your art, well, this is for you. And we'd love to have you ride shotgun with us as we... Give this movie a marketing makeover. Okay, you in? Well, please, just go to this link, sign up, and then we'll start delivering content pretty soon. Thank you so much for your time. I think now I have consumed 45 minutes of your life you'll never get back. But we hope to pay that forward with this mini course. Again, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>